Hey there, everybody. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few minutes. My name is Rich. I'm the channel host. And normally we're talking about building our small drone businesses. So that goes from flights to post-processing to having to edit things one at a time. All of those things come into our businesses on a regular basis. So we're more than just drone pilots. Now, today I'm doing a continuing part of our series on switching from Photoshop to Affinity Photo because there's been a lot of people looking to make the move after some things that Adobe's done in the recent weeks slash months. So I am learning this along with you. I'm not an expert on Affinity. I'm feeling my way through with Affinity, as a matter of fact. And I wanted to share that kind of perspective with you. And today, we're going to talk quickly about doing a simple HDR image. So sometimes we like to bracket our images so that we can get the best dynamic range when we're doing an HDR. And sometimes single photos don't do it for us. So that's when high dynamic range photography comes in. Now, like I said, I've been playing with some of the features of Affinity Photo and only recently started playing with the HDRs to see how I like them. So I want to give you a quick rundown on how we're going to do this and then actually generate an HDR and see how we feel about it. So I am going up to File. So let's zoom in up there, right up on the toolbar, File. And we're going to do a new HDR merge. So I made a small folder with a couple of images for us. So let's go ahead and do a new HDR merge. So we're going to add these four images. These are very old images, so no comments on the... Uh, this was a practice flight to, um, to generate some test files for myself years ago. I think maybe this is 2019. I'm not really sure. So I went ahead with the merge, and now it's doing the tone mapping as well. And there we go. So this is an HDR generated with uh, Affinity Photo. So I don't know. Um, it looks all right to me. Uh, it's closing in. I know time of day is starting to close in toward sunset. And actually, we did some other photos um, with sunset backgrounds. And we did some pretty heavy editing to make a cool sunset. And we were utilizing Lightroom for that. This is a starting point for us. Over on the left-hand side, since we chose HDR, let me first go ahead and zoom in up here. We are in the tone mapping persona. So they've got the photo persona, they've got the liquify persona, develop uh, tone mapping, and then export persona. Right now, they give us a couple of starting points. Natural looking HDR, detailed, cool, so it cooled off the color temperature. High contrast black and white, okay, that's interesting. Or dramatic, so right now we're not dramatic, we're in natural. Let's go click on dramatic just to see. Boy, that punched things up. Um, you know, and I know for realtors that we work with, they do like things punched up. But this is punched up a little beyond the reality of the scene. But, you know, if I were to show this to some of my realtor friends, they'd be like, yeah, you know, make it even more saturated. Um, so I'm going to go back to the natural for now, and you can see how much softer that is. Now, over on the right-hand side are the tools in our persona here. So we have our main so this is for an, a tone map so for an hdr um you can clamp to sdr if you want to i'm not going to do that and i'm going to let you go and find on google uh what clamped sdr means uh we have tone compression at 100 percent. let's dial that back okay now we've got you know shades of only one of the darker images here not good so we'll go back to that We'll go back to that tone compression of 100%. Um, we can do local contrast here, so you can see it darkening down in the foreground a bit. Uh, it is also getting some more detail in here as well. So what would we like to uh, leave local contrast at? We'll leave it, let's put it at 40 for now. Now, one of these things I do have to tell you, this is not paint by numbers. This is going to be you experimenting to find the best settings to deliver images that are compelling to your particular clients. Most of our clients are construction folks, so they're not really worried about uh, a pretty scene. They're worried about documenting the overall scene. We can also affect our exposure. I, I think I'm going to leave the exposure on the black point brightness. So let's just see what happens on the black point. Okay, so moving from zero to negative 10%, and then otherwise, oof, that's terrible. So we can just click in here and put it back to 0%. All right, there we go. Um, we do have enhancements, so we can push the saturation up, vibrance as well. So let's see what happens when we push vibrance over the top. 
Not much. Okay, Vibrance isn't doing anything in here. So there we go. We're going to go back to 0%. How about Saturation? Oh, yeah, we can get a really hideous HDR um, just by pushing this up, the Saturation. Uh, you know what? I don't think I want it that high. We're going to light touches in here, just very light touches. The next item we have is our white balance. So is it too cool? Is it too warm? They've got a preset over here on the left hand side for cool. So if I went over here to the temperature and dropped it, look at that. That is cooling off massively and we don't want to uh, play with that. We can also play with the tint of this. I don't think the tint really needs any attention. We can also deal with shadows and highlights. So if we want to bring the shadows up a little bit. Uh, I do have to say one other thing working in this HDR module um, is that some of the tools here um, don't respond too much. They're, they're a very soft touch except for the vibrance that we saw. But on the shadows, we're, uh, we're not getting too much out of the shadows here. So I'm going to put us back to zero. But in other images, you will get more out of it. And then we can also do detail refinement. So let's take a look at that. And if we push the amount, once again, this is not hitting very heavy. So how about we push the radius and it's doing a little for us here in the detail. We can dial that back a bit, but you know, it's getting a little too edgy. So um, probably I'd want to pull this back a bit. And finally, you can use curves as well. One thing that I've noticed when I've looked at other uh, other video sets about using uh, the HDR mode and Affinity, um, a lot of this, a lot of the tools come back to curves and levels and things, things that we were very comfortable with many editions of Adobe back. So it kind of feels like we're reaching back in time to some of the Adobe tools. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've loved the Adobe tools the whole time. Um, but in the end, there we go. Let's say we're done with this now. We can go up to the left hand corner and click on apply. So now that we've clicked on apply, you will notice over on the left hand side, the toolbar has changed. So it's our regular tools for the photo uh, persona. And over on the right hand side, the regular tools that pop up for photo persona here. Now we could do some more editing in here. Um, we could put different filters into here as well. And that will be in another video. So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown. We made an HDR. It's definitely pumped up more than any of the uh, original images that went into its making. So HDR seems to be a very soft touch in here. Maybe, maybe we can get a little heavier handed if you want to make some cool HDRs. But this is the starting point for us and for us as drone pilots. So oftentimes when we're out flying, you know, we don't have the perfect, uh, we don't have the perfect lighting. I mean, if you're out flying midday, you're going to have some garbage lighting. So what can you do? One option is to utilize HDR in Affinity or in other standalone HDR applications as well. I hope that this has been informative. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and look forward to more of these types of quick videos on Affinity Photo as I'm learning it along with you.